Hey everyone, in this video I'll take you through the process on adjusting your coilover suspension. These are 10 Flex Z coilovers. So they've got a locking collar here and they've got the locking collars here so you can set your preload on your spring. We won't be touching the preload because that's already set from factory and we're happy with that. I'll show you how to adjust a damper but what I will just show you is how to open this and how to adjust this height. So what you'll need is you'll need your spanners. I'm using a set of BC Golds because I don't have um, the 10 spanners that didn't come with the vehicle. And you'll need a measuring tape or a ruler or something similar. So we'll start by taking a measurement off here. Because what we're going to do is even it up on both sides. So you can either take your measurement here like so, or I prefer to take it like so. So from there to there, so that's about 94. So it doesn't matter where you take it, as long as it's level, it'll be the same reading. So that's... So we're measuring this distance in here because we're going to be adjusting the height of the vehicle and evening it out. So this side is 94 and we'll go to the other side which needs the adjustment. So now we are on the other side and if you're unsure on your preload on your spring, if you believe that someone might have possibly played around with it, especially if it's a user vehicle and you think someone might have changed the setting from factory, what you can do is take your tape measure, find a flat spot at the top over here. So if I bring you in there. That flat spot over here, that's a good even spot. Make sure it's the same on this side, on the end, the other side, that the measurements will be even. So find that flat spot, put it there, and come to the bottom, to the flat base here, and that's 180 mm. So you just want to go to the other side and check and make sure that's the same, which I've done. And they're both even, so that means the preload will be correct and it's set from factory. So that's fine. What we're concerned about is this distance over here. So if I take my tape measure here and put it here. You can see it's at the 90 mm and the other side was at the 94. So we're going to raise this up a little bit. We're going to increase the height of the suspension and we're probably going to bring it up by about 3 mm and leave a 1 mm difference between the left and the right side. So before doing anything, what I like to do is I like to spray a bit of lubricant, WD-40, CRC, whatever you have. Spray it on the threads, especially if it's a used coilover. If it's brand new, that's normally fine. And then you just take a cloth and clean all the threads in here. Give all this a good clean before opening it up. And also take a brush as well and just make sure it's a nylon brush. Don't use a steel brush or anything similar. And just clean up this area. You want to get all the dirt away from here. If you have compressed air, use it and just blow in this area as well to clean up this whole area before opening it up. You can even use anti-seize once you open it up to make your life a little bit easier next time around. Always make sure you wear your safety glasses whenever working on suspension components because you might need to go underneath the vehicle. Generally speaking, this will be quite tight in here. So if you've got the proper 10 coilover spanners, you'll have a socket here where you can put in your ratchet or your power bar and you can open it that way. But most other manufacturers, they don't want you over tightening it. So just use a long pole, something similar to this. And just open up just like so you just need a bit of leverage and that normally is good enough if it starts spinning like you just saw now you want to hold the top So we're at the 92.5, just want to go a little bit more. Bear in mind you still have to tighten this so your final adjustment, your measurement will be a little bit different so just keep that in mind. And like I said, it's very important to spray some lubricant the day before, especially if they used ones. It'll make your life a whole lot easier. Yeah, so I'm happy with that. That's about the 93 mark on this side. 
We'll just jump again on the other side and just double check the measurement again. So now we're on the driver's side. We'll just double check the measurement. Yep, and I'm quite happy with that measurement. That's quite even. So now what we will do is we'll go ahead and lock it in. There is a torque setting for this, for the 10 one. But generally, as long as you go as tight as what it was when opening it, it's normally fine. That's about it. You don't want to go any tighter than that. Let's go ahead and wipe anything down. You can always mark this here if you want to just get a reference point. If you're ever getting coilover suspension, make sure it's the body type adjustment, not just the coil adjustment because the coil adjustment can be quite harsh these are more expensive but they're better in the long run it gives you a lot more adjustability so that's just one tip i can give you so that's all done make sure everything's tied in here and here now that we've adjusted the spring now you can go ahead and double check it so you can take your tape measure put it in between the axle here right in the center and just take a measurement here to the body so this is about 42 on this side We'll go the, to the other side and just double check that so that's how you check your final measurement and then once you establish that both sides are the same put your wheel back on take it for a drive and then recheck this measurement between your center of the axle and the body over here yep so it's as we adjusted so this is about a couple of mm higher so this just compensates for the driver being in the driver's seat at all times whenever the vehicle's used so now we'll move to the top and adjust the damper so now we're at the top here at the strut so you want to take this cap off here and how this comes from factory is this is always fully tightened from factory so at the moment it's completely opened so we'll go ahead and tighten it fully we'll count the amount of turns one two three so that's 31 and it locks at 31 do not exceed 31 so do not exceed it clockwise or anti-clockwise when it stops it stops so this is how it comes set from the factory with 31 turns and how they want you to adjust it is to go back eight turns from the fully locked position so realistically if someone has played around with your vehicle or if you bought it used and you're not sure what the setting is just go fully clockwise and then go back eight turns and you can adjust it accordingly so now we're at 31, we'll go back 8 turns, 1, if it skips a tooth, go back full again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and that's 8 turns counterclockwise or anti-clockwise. You can also use a hex tool over here, or you can use an allen key or something similar, or a hex socket, but um, generally speaking you can also just do it by hand. If you've got the adjustable electronic controller, uh, you'll have the motors here at the top, but this one's just a manually adjusted, so we've done this side, we'll go ahead and do the other side. So now we're fully locked in position, we'll go back 8 turns. So that's eight on this side and you also want to do the rears if you're not sure about that so just keep that in mind it's the exact same procedure for the rear another thing that's worth mentioning is this camber plate here at the top so this is how you can set your camber on your wheels so if your wheels are sitting flush or if you want them to sit a little bit more in so that's negative camber or if you want them to sit a little bit more out that's positive camber normally we dial in a little bit more of negative camber especially when you're cornering hard so then that way the wheel straightens up so this is where you can get that extra bit of camber adjustment for the front on these STIs. From factory, you can adjust the camber bolt over here and you can dial in the camber that way as well, but it's limited to a certain degree. So that's where these coilovers come into its own, where you can actually dial in a bit more camber if needed, especially if you've got staggered wheels or something similar. The rears, you will need camber arms if you were gonna go down that road. So that's my quick video on how you adjust these 10 coilovers. It's basically the same as BC Gold. Uh, there's not much difference to it. Just the torque settings and the preload can be a little bit different. So make sure you check your owner's manual as to what the preload is and the torque settings that you tighten up your particular collars over here. Make sure you just check your specifications on your particular vehicle. Otherwise you can use this video as a reference guide. So thanks for watching everyone. Stay tuned. There will be a lot more coming on this particular vehicle. A bit of bonus footage. This is the rears that I was referencing to earlier. Sometimes you might need to actually 
take your rear boot tray out. That gives you access to the struts over here. You might have to, in your case, depending on your model, cut this trim over here just to fit it in a bit better. But we'll go ahead and just check what the adjustment is on this side. It's a bit dusty here, so we'll just give this all a good clean before adjusting anything. Remember, cleanliness when adjusting suspension is very important, so just keep that always in mind. So as we dial in the fronts, we'll dial in the rears at the same. So I'm not sure what this vehicle was set to. So at this particular point, we'll count forward to go clockwise. So that's 22 turns that went to clockwise. And now we're fully locked in. 22 turns on this side. Well, let's check this side now with others. So what I'm counting is just those clicks, so that's one click. And this side's fully locked, so obviously this is why it's important if you buy your vehicle and you're not sure what the previous adjustment was, just do it up to a factory setting. Just to double check and make sure that this is not playing up, we'll go back counterclockwise and we should count about 30 turns, 30 to 31, uh, as it is from factory. The one click being it might be just a skip like so so that's why i'm not accounting for one so as you saw there it was completely off so we'll go again go fully clockwise until it stops yep stop there now we'll go back eight clicks there's about a half a click there so we won't count that we'll just go back from that half click. That's eight clicks on this side. And that's eight clicks on this side. So now we're fully set back to factory. So we're fully reset the damper. The dampers on the rear and on the front so the stiffness is set exactly how it would be from factory eight clicks eight clicks and eight clicks at the front on either side so that's negative eight clicks from full lock so from fully tightened we're going back eight clicks so that's why it's important like i said always check this if you're unsure and if the previous owner is unsure or your customer is unsure just check it and then reset it and then you can dial it back accordingly so now if it's after taking for a drive if it's still too stiff we'll dial it back another five clicks on all all round and adjust it accordingly thanks for watching everyone hope this was uh, some help to you see ya